All right, what's up guys? This is gonna be a real short video to show you how to get your initial listing data into metrics, and then the next video is gonna show you the main functionality of the tool. Uh, when you first get started, you'll wanna watch the authorization video, which is the one prior to this, that shows you how to get your uh, email and password and get kind of your dummy account link to all that stuff uh, to where you can see this menu up here. And then what we're gonna cover in this video is step one and two. Before I do that, though, real quick on a couple of these settings, the product display mode, 99% of the time you want to have ASIN there. Uh, the only time you'd want the SKU mode, which is the other option here, is if you have like an FBM and FBA product that for some reason you're wanting to track together on the dashboard. Uh, there's some drawbacks there, though. You don't get to see like sessions data for um, days that don't have sales. There's just some, some of the information in those reports aren't as good as the ASIN mode reports, but at any rate, the metrics tab URL, that's just from your actual uh, metrics tab. So you click on the second tab here and then up in the search bar up here, copy that and then just paste that into input box there. Market, just pick the market you're selling in. That's going to toggle like the images and a few other dynamic fields that are related to the market. Start date, that's gonna be where you want your data to start. So column AQ right here, and then going off to the right, you'll learn in the next video that there's some features for adding new columns. You'll see that there's probably only 14 to 30 columns available by default, but you can always add more as you go. All right, so that's kind of the main setup that you wanna do first. And then as far as the onboarding, this video here is what you're watching right now, most likely. Uh, and then the, the download inventory and fee preview, we're gonna click that in a minute. Before I do that, I just wanna show you there's a few settings in Google Chrome you'll wanna set up. So first off, go to advanced, uh, downloads, make sure this is checked on. That'll just make sure it pops up, a window pops up and asks you where to save files. The other one's under privacy and security, site settings. If you scroll down to the bottom, pop-ups and redirects. Um, if you have an issue with the script here that takes you to the Amazon pages uh, here, and then there's some other ones here that you'll learn about in the next video. If you have any issues there, just make sure you've got the <clears throat> allowed site. You, you can probably add the Amazon uh, site itself, or what will usually happen is when you actually click on it. So I'm gonna click on this first one. You need to already be logged into Amazon, so I'm already logged in but um, it should work when you click on this that it just opens it up. But up here in the upper right by this, uh, by this little magnifying glass, you'll get a pop-up pop blocker if you have it on and it doesn't like this site for some reason. So all these Seller Central links are just generic. You can copy and paste these and put them into um, this section here under the allowed site area if needed. And that should allow you to open that uh, that those scripts that automatically open you to the tabs. They're pretty handy for, especially the ones that have a ton of reports that you need to download, like your SKU reports. But uh, for the first few reports we need, we're just gonna grab this all listing file and then just download that. You can save it to your desktop or to your Google Drive account. So it's just this one here, all listing reports. Then the other one is the fee preview. If it doesn't take you and open you to this fee preview, just scroll down to the left and click on fee preview. Then you'll click on CSV download. And again, just click the download button next to that one when it loads. And again, save it to your desktop or your Google Drive. All right, then you're gonna hop back into metrics and just go to the second step here, which takes you to a uh, kind of a hidden sheet to begin with, you'll see it's gonna pop up down here at the bottom, Seller Center Reports. I've already got the data pasted in here. Um, so what you what you can do is if you don't wanna download those reports, you can literally just type this information in if you have it readily available. All we're looking for is the SKU, the ASIN, if it's FBA or FBM, and then this data here is related to, uh, it comes from the fee preview report. So if I'm just gonna import these using those reports, I'm just gonna to go to import and then find the Reports, I think I've got them in here. So here's my all listing report. I'm just going to insert that as a new sheet and then same deal, file, import, demo, uh, metrics, fee preview. Now, if you're selling in Canada as well, you'll have both standard and 
um, metric units, you'll probably just want the standard units. So you can you can put a filter on like the dimensions. So just that info comes to the top. Um, but what you'll do is grab the information all the way over to they've just changed it. And in some markets, it's different. That's why we have the uh, solar center reports kind of dynamic if you want to just type the information in. But up to column Y there is usually the expected fulfillment fee per unit. You can just copy that information there and hit control C, go over to your Solar Central Report tab and then just paste that. Yours will be blank, mine's not. So control shift V, paste the values. Um, and you'll see that as long as you don't overwrite this price and there's like an error there and then all the information checks out, then you should be good. So you can see it all matches up. Um, and then the SKU information, you can pick that off your all listing report. If say you've got a bunch of SKUs, that's kind of the intent of using this report because it's kind of got all the information there for you. Uh, but you can see you got the seller SKU here, so I could paste that across the ACE in there. The other one is just the FBA or FBM. So there is a field, I think it's type, uh, this one here, ID type. That one may indicate FBM or FBA, I can't remember. Uh, you should know it just by looking at your products. So just fill that information in. Um, and then you're good to go. And that's pretty much the end of this video. The, the next video is gonna start off with the build SKU dashboard where that's just gonna take some of this information and start to apply it across the tool. So um, I will see you guys on that next video. See ya.